Welcome everyone to onlineevents.co.uk's online interview with Christy O'Connor. Welcome Christy Thanks, to John. the interview. Good to be here. Yeah. Well, it was really nice to have you here tonight. Um, we are bros broadcasting live from Centrix Conference Centre in Livingston, West Lothian, which is in the UK, because I guess so our audience could be anywhere in the world. Um, we are here really in preparation for Christie's interview later or at the end of the month on the 29th of January uh -huh. um, where Christy will outline um, her work and her experience working with people who are living with HIV mm -hmm. and families who have someone within their family who is living with HIV. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking forward to that lecture. And if you scroll down, there's, um, there's an opportunity to book your free ticket to the lecture. So that might be something you want to do after the interview tonight. Mm -hmm. And you can you can either see that online or you can come through to Livingston. Absolutely. And yes. it's lovely through here. Yeah. <laughs> My first time to be in Livingston. It's great. So you've kind of spent the afternoon with us yeah. here and you liked it here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that so you've got the both those options, which mm -hmm. is really great. Mm -hmm. What we want to do tonight, we're online till eight o'clock and we kind of are gonna have a interview slash chat about not so much how you do your work but mm -hmm. your experience mm -hmm. around your work um, get a sense of you Christy and what's led you into the work and mm -hmm. what's kept you here um, as we were kind of saying earlier we are hoping that we'll have a discussion so um, as we're saying you'll be able to see to this side of your chat room of the video there's a chat room um, with a little message type your chat message here. If you click on there, you can type away and ask Christy whatever you like. Um, we'll respond to what we want to respond to. <laughs> <laughs> but you can yeah. ask whatever you like and um, you can chat with each other. So hopefully we'll mm -hmm. have a bit of a, a group discussion. So yeah. Hope so. Great. Okay, well, let's um, start what we're here for, Christy. Okay. Um, so I, I guess on our blurb, we say you have 17 years experience mm -hmm. in, um, in the field of working therapeutically with people who are living with HIV. Mm -hmm. um, so can I ask you to begin with, what, what got you thinking about counselling? What started you, drew you to that field? Okay. Um, I, I have reached a kind of um, a platter in my life, I guess, where I, I, I had, had a couple of options. I could either carry on along the route that I was going on, which didn't seem very attractive, or I could change in the space altogether. Of two weeks, two and people that I decided I, knew I just I didn't suicide. Want to be doing that and a third job. person who'd been fighting a battle with cancer for many years, um, kind of finally had to accept that she was she was going to die. And all of this death in such a short space of time made me really start questioning my own life and what is life about. And you know, I was searching for a way in which I could I could just discover that for myself and um, a friend started working in the cafe of what was at that time Solas um, which is uh, which was a, a center which worked with people with uh, HIV and, and AIDS at that time and that was in the early 90s um, so he started he took over the cafe and they were really short of volunteers so I decided that that would be an opportunity to, to for me to understand more about life and death mm -hmm. so I started volunteering in the cafe um, and then um, more and more what I was doing in the cafe was sitting and talking to people and just being available for people to chat with um, so we set up a, a volunteer support team and, and the job of the, of the volunteer supporters was just to be in the cafe and just to chat with people about whatever. Yeah. Um, so we did that. Um, started doing counselling skills at that time. Yeah. Um, and so then I, I really got into it and uh, decided that was really the route I wanted to go down. Yeah. So here you were volunteering in a cafe. Uh-huh kind of thinking about how to better understand your own experience of life and death yeah. and, and you're starting to listen to people. And, uh -huh. and is that what got you thinking about training and list counselling skills? Yes, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, that was, that was part, of, part of what was required to be one of the, the volunteer support workers was to, 
do the first two modules of the of the Costco counselling skills course. Yeah. So we did that, and then I just really enjoyed it. I thought this is actually what I need, what I'm I'm meant to be doing. Mm. It just felt right. Yeah, it was a real fit when you started Definitely. that training with yeah with you. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about SOAS? I mean, that sounds really interesting. That was um, an agency that works with people who live with HIV. It uh -huh. sounds like it's a big part of your experience. Uh -huh. Yeah, SOAS, it, it, it doesn't exist in it, of itself anymore. Um, it was part of Waverley Care. Waverley Care still exists. And um, so SOAS kind of continues, but in a, in a different uh, guise, I guess. But at that time, SOAS... Waverley Care was divided into two sections. One was Milestone House, which was the um, hospice for people with HIV and AIDS, and SOLAS was a day centre which offered information and support of, of varying kinds, so counselling, various um, alternative therapies, art, um, all sorts of art, art projects were yeah. going on.